Hello and welcome to the Sacred Gates Ascension podcast. My name is Ilora. As you know, there's something called the Kundalini, which is the, the Sanskrit name for that coiled snake, that idea of the coiled snake at the base of the spine, awakening the spiritual energy as it travels up your most central super highway. Yeah? Your spine is a physical aspect of your body and it's also a mental, emotional and spiritual energetic central column or central pillar of your body. Your central column, as I'm going to call it, connects deep down through the root chakra and deep down into the earth. And it's what connects your physical body here to the planet on all levels of the planet's body too. For the planet has a physical aspect, a karmic, energetic, sentient aspect to it as well. And that central column connects to the earth and runs up through your body and up through your central being all the way through to your higher bodies through the crown and up higher and higher and higher. Now the central column is often focused on by a lot of people on the back side of the central column which is the yang side of the the energy highway there. The front side of the central column is more of the yin aspect. So the yang side is more dense, it's more of a harder aspect of the kundalini and the yin side is more soft, uh, soft aspect of the kundalini and the central column as well which is the which is where the kundalini opens through. Now it's a wonderful thing to work with the central column and if you're using brute force methods such as packing breathing, fire breathing, combining that with fasting and doing full-on yoga and really just like forcing energy up that spine, focusing on your third eye rather than coming from a really grounded spiritual foundation, you're going to come into a lot of problems when that when that spiritual energy opens up and rushes through your central column up to the higher frequencies. Uh, that can cause a lot of problems and we'll do another video on that. It can cause some permanent issues and really damage people and freak them out if they can come back from that. So I think there's, uh, there's a lot of um, benefit, it's essential that we work with the front channel as well. If you only work with your back channel, you're really only developing that denser level of the kundalini, that more yang harder side. And what that means is when you do release, whether it's in like really powerfully and intensely or just a little bit at a time, if you only develop the yang side, you're missing out on the development that occurs from working on the yin, the front side of the central column. And so when you work on the yin side of the spine and the central column, it works out all the little glitches because it's yin, it's softer, it's finer, it's more refined. And so you're able to work through those little glitches gently and softly, which also trains your accuracy and everything like that very well. And what it means is that there's less friction when you, it's like smoothing out the edges with soft, fine sandpaper on some hard wood. If you don't, if you don't softly sand out those little rough um, edges with a little bit of friction, then when you rub your hand against that yang hard wood, you're going to get a splinter. So you want to get out that soft, fine, very fine, soft sandpaper. And so it's like this, when you work on the inside, the front side of your central column, you work through all those little kit, little glitches that will actually cause a lot of friction if you only develop the yang side and the back side of your spine. And so one of those ways that we can actually work the front side of our spine, um, you, can, you can run the meridian, so the central meridian, which connects you is the storehouse for all the yin meridians, which starts in your perineum and runs up and up to just under your lip, if I recall correctly. You can flush that. That's one thing you can do a few inches off your body slowly. Remember, always do it as slowly as you're able to feel. Don't just, you know, if, if, you're, if, you're, um, if you're more experienced, you can do it faster. But if you're not that experienced, you want to run it slowly so that your finger fingertips and the rest of your body can pick up the actual transformations that are happening in your energy body. Remember, feeling is key. 
feeling takes you to the essence of anything that you're doing and like I said if you're just not feeling and you're just like using techniques you've learned about and you're just doing them on yourself and you're only working the yang side it's definitely going to develop just the yang side of your spirituality the yang kundalini which is a quite a scary, scary experience if you've ever had it um, depending on what blockages you have so solutions when you're doing any energy work get to know your central column now your central column is is um, grounded down in through your lower down tm which also includes the quas and as i've said before the quas is the energetic name the chinese traditional chinese name for where the legs meet the body and it's not just a physical aspect of where your legs meet the body but there's massive dantians there there's a huge bunch of tendons and tissues and chakras and all sorts of things going on and so when you open this area you help to align your spine and take restriction out of your spine and you also can feel the central column more easily so a good way to do it is just to lean slightly forward from your quads, inclining from your quads. That means that your quads engage the movement first. You're not moving your chin first, for example, yeah. So your or your shoulders first. You're moving from the quads just slightly forward, that you get like a little bit of tension in your abdomen, which helps you to then feel that breastbone area, the solar plexus, and feel all of this area here, yeah just slightly and you can even just hold up your hands bring your chin down a little bit so that you're not crocking crunching the spine don't collapse relax your cars let them open your tailbone your tailbone is more likely to curl under when you open up your quads it's a classic standing qigong pose posture Lean forward a lot if you really want to feel it, since we're just focusing on the central column right now. And just for now, just focus on keeping the quads open. So lock them, feel what they feel like when they're locked, and then unlock them. And just feel the weight of your body sinking a little bit into the surface that you're sitting on. Now don't do anything. Simply watch, simply feel, simply be here with your central column. Let your central column, this yin aspect of your central column, to show you what it is. To give you a glimpse, a little glimpse of its beautiful energy. Relax your tummy, keep the quads open. Keep your chin relaxed and down, fingers straight to help you focus your mind. Now bring your soft awareness to feeling the inside of your core. You may just be feeling the physical body. Just notice sensations at that level. Notice how the more you relax your quads, the more structurally sound this area becomes as you're able to release the lower back keeping the quads open and there's a kind of like nice feeling of integrity of coming together so you're not just like you know like that there's like this kind of awareness in your side ribs you're bringing awareness and clean cleanliness to your whole body you're purifying your body so don't try to fill it with light or anything like that there's nothing that you really need to do except to follow the instruction on relaxing the quads and notice what happens when this happens lower the chin Bring awareness to the sides of the ribs. Allow your awareness to be soft, bare, light. And in your awareness being soft, bare and light, notice that your central column also has a similar frequency of softness, of lightness. Observe that, keeping the quads open. If you're collapsing at the solar plexus, slightly open it up while relaxing, while relaxing the lower back and the quads. So keep the quads open as you open up and you're going to feel a structural integrity as your fascia suit gets stronger 
and your physical body at the vital energy gets filled with more vital chi, enhancing your immune system. There's a definite connection between the immune system and the central column, but I do encourage you just to practice this, every, you know, just a minute a day, a couple of minutes a day, and just get to know. It's like building a relationship with a very sacred part of you. No matter what you're doing, whether it's martial arts, internal martial arts, tantra, qigong, reiki, pranic healing, certain kinds of you know, other healing, sound healing, whatever it is, your central column is in the center of it all. So if you have also been just working on the back side, make sure you focus on the front side too and tidying up those lines there. And it's going to become a very sacred part of you. It has a lot of beautiful energy inside of it and a lot of information. So don't try to get anything from it. Um, there is a lot of information, spiritual information passing through those, those areas. And there are certain postures that accelerate your ability to feel your higher bodies. And the one that I just showed you is one of those postures. So give it a try. Try it out. During your meditation practice, if you're doing a seated meditation, try inclining from the quads and engaging that central column a little bit more with a focus on the front. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Bye-bye.